practical navigator. So far in this series, we've become experts at single contact calculations for course, speed, and CPA. In this episode, we'll learn how to either avoid a contact if we're the burdened vessel in a maneuvering situation, or intercept that contact for search and rescue or law enforcement purposes. The first step in any problem is to determine the true course and speed, and possibly the CPA, just like last episode. So we'll plot this contact and determine its direction of relative motion, which turns out to be 188 degrees true. Next is the speed of relative motion, which we determine by using the speed distance time nomogram. And the SRM is just over 10 knots. You don't always have to calculate CPA since it's apparent the contact is going to pass at one nautical mile, but you can to be thorough. Next we'll use the relative motion line to draw the relative motion vector and it is measured out a distance equal to the speed of relative motion, or 10.2 knots. It's drawn in green in this case because I want to highlight something in just a minute. Finally, the remaining vector from E to M is the contact's true course and speed. Now we want to open this CPA up a bit. The first thing is to find a moment of execution, or MX. Let's maneuver our ship when the contact reaches 4 nautical miles. So we'll plot MX on the relative motion line when it crosses 4 miles from us. Then we decide what we want the new relative motion line to do. If we want to open the contact up to 2 nautical miles, we draw the new relative motion line so it passes us at 2 nautical miles. Now here is the conceptual part. The contact is not going to change its course and speed, but we are. So we'll plot the new relative motion vector from M, from the contact's true course and speed, and then we'll know what we have to do to make the triangle work. So we parallel the relative motion line to M and draw the new relative motion vector. The cool thing is, as long as we match our vector to anywhere along this line, our wish of a 2 nautical mile CPA will come true. So we could turn north and keep our speed. We could turn south, but that probably wouldn't be in accordance with the rules. Even better, we can keep our own course, but slow down to 3 knots, and then our desired CPA of 2 nautical miles will come true. Intercept problems are done the exact same way. Let's imagine we're on a fisheries patrol. Wait, that's too calm. It's probably more like this. Or even better, like this. In any case, we're patrolling six miles east of a closed area, and notice a radar contact inside and moving out fairly quickly. We want to go investigate. So we'll plot the contact as usual and determine its true course and speed. This should be no problem by now. Just remember we're using a 2 to 1 scale. In this case, we want to execute our maneuver after the contact has left the closed area. So let's set our moment of execution, or MX, to this point along the relative motion line. And instead of avoiding the contact, we'll bring the new relative motion line right to us, making it CBDR by choice. Since the contact's course and speed will remain the same, we parallel the new relative motion line to point M and plot backwards. Then we have the new relative motion vector. This part isn't always apparent, so try and think about the orientation of the vessels to give yourself a reality check. Anywhere along this line will yield an appropriate intercept. We just need to pick a point and read off the necessary course and speed. Same as an avoidance problem. So let's bring up the engine RPM and see what course we need to steer at 18 knots to intercept our mysterious contact. We can set our intercept speed to 18 and see where the arc crosses the new relative motion vector. If it's a bit rougher, we can also plot an intercept course for 16 knots. And just to hammer home the point, here is a 14 knot intercept solution. If 
you'd like some more practice, try this problem. In this episode, we've taken a look at avoidance and intercept problems, which are typically the most difficult ones you'll face on any service-wide or deck watch officer exam. In the next episode, we'll take a look at true and desired wind calculations. <laughs>